chapter 4's account. It's obviously on the heel of chapter 3. In chapter 3, we come in contact with the first recorded miracle after the descent of the Holy Ghost in chapter 2. Reminding the disciples in chapter 1 of the promise that is to come. Yes, sir. Chapter 2, he comes. Uh -huh. yes, sir. Chapter 3, he goes to work. Yeah. Right. I want to start out tonight by saying that this story seemingly is a familiar one for the average Pentecostal believer. But there are some things that I think that we ought look at before we leave here on tonight. First of all, Peter and John, fresh from having received the Holy Ghost, <laughs> were on their way to the temple to pray around 3 o'clock in the afternoon as was the custom. But I'm not really sure what prompted them this day. Because obviously, when we do a little scholarship, this man that is called uh, just a man that's lame from his mother's womb was carried to a place right, right outside the gate, beautiful, every day. Y'all go help me, right? Now, here's the thing. I, I, I really wanted to, you know, and I always get caught up on words and whatnot in the text. But, but, but this beautiful game, <laughs> what was beautiful about it was that you do need to understand this fact. That this man that was born lame indicates to me that begging was his profession. You all have to stop talking about people in certain professions because we never know what got them there. Begging in that day seemingly was honorable if you were lame because they understood that that's all you could do. But the other side of that is that in Judaism, it was meritorious for a believer in Judaism to give something to the one that was lame. So what better place <laughs> for have to have somebody to lay you or to place you than a place where it's meritorious to beg and receive something for your begging. I, don't, I wish I had two or three people. Now I ain't talking about your cousin them now. <laughs> that ain't that, that they have able bodies and they just don't want to work. I ain't talking about them. Are you following me? But here they are. At the gate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm sure. That this was not. The first time. That they've seen him. Because it was custom. For them to pray. 
two especially set aside times in the morning and in the afternoon and then later on they will have a night devotion but they're on their way to the temple at three and the bible says that uh, something strange happens now I think it was because they had received the Holy Ghost. They had a fresh anointing of the Holy Ghost. And when you have a whole lot of power and the power is fresh, you don't know what to do with it or yourself. They saw, are y'all in here? Oh, yeah. Now the thing about this man always uh, gets me. And I got to talk about him for just a moment. All right. There are some people that are just born wrong. Yeah. You don't hear what I'm saying? Yeah. There are people who are just born wrong. Yeah. Now the truth of the matter is all of us are. But I'm talking about that not born wrong to the extent that even babies uh, have mobility if they're okay physically. This man was born disjointed. His feet and ankle bones did not come together in a ball and socket like ours do. He was born to where he didn't have a swivel in his feet. So he grew up lame from birth. Now I heard that young lady, that young lady blessed me when she said salvation don't care if you've been homeless. Can I just, I don't feel like hollering. Can I just talk? Salvation doesn't care if you've been a prostitute. Salvation doesn't care if you've been a drug or addict. If you just come in contact with a transforming power, it don't matter what you came in here with. Am I doing all right? It don't matter what you came in here with. Touch him, I said, before you leave here, everything going to be all right. Now look at him, I promise you that. Well, y'all give me just a few more minutes and I promise y'all, I ain't going to bother y'all too much longer. Now, I got to tell you something. Now, there was a process. <laughs> there was always a process for the reconstruction of the cripple. You don't have to come here all right. But you can leave okay. Can I talk? Now let me now this really ain't what I came to talk about, but I've got to show you this. There was a process from the time that they began to recognize this man's presence who's asking in arms. Watch this. First of all, Peter and John, look at the process. Somebody look at the process. The process is they gave him some attention. Now, they couldn't pay attention, but they gave the man some attention. Look at verse 4, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, God. Peter and John looked at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. They gave the man some attention. You, you, you don't realize it, but uh, you just 
three steps away from helping somebody that's next to you. Yes, sir. Stop trying to ignore people around you. Because sometimes you don't realize it, but all you got to do is just give somebody some attention. Yes. They look at the man. Are y'all still here? Yes. Then secondly, they <laughs> gave him a word. Yes. Now, 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 they said silver and gold, we ain't got that. I know you out here for arms, but we don't even have any arms to give you. But we got something that I promise you that'll help you. We got a name. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I wish I had about two sanctified people in here. We ain't got no money, but we got a name. In the name. Shoot, I done got happy here. Of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then lastly, after giving him some attention and a name, they gave him a hand. They took him by the hand and lifted him up. You better stop trying to ignore people and not try to touch them. Start them and say, touch me, God my. That's why give me a hand, give me a hand. You gave me a name, but I, I, I need a hand. I ain't never walked before, so I ain't got enough strength to get up on my own. Give me a hand. Give me your eyes. Give me a name. Not Jacob and Johnny now. No, no, no. Not Junebug. Don't, don't, don't worry. Give me Jesus. And then, give me a hand. Watch this. Notice something. Something happened as soon as the man was given a look, a name, and a hand. The Bible says, and suddenly his feet and ankle bones, which were the problems prior to birth came together but he wasn't strong enough to get up on his own he needed a hand hey, somebody my hand said I, I, I'm going to get you up I'm gonna, you're going to finally get up tonight he got up walking leaping praising God now the people saw that in the, in the temple now let me go to chapter 4. And then I'm just about done. Chapter 4. When you do stuff for God, somebody going to be mad at you. I want to talk to these young people tonight that gave these testimonies and gave these uh Moments of exhortation. Yeah. Don't think you gonna be uh, looked upon as somebody that's special for God. You are actually freakish in today's society. Ladies wearing them look. Things on their head. That's how they talk. Yeah. And, and, and y'all pastor got y'all. I heard, I heard the young lady. Yeah. Got y'all in bondage. Yeah. You know what? I, if, if, if it was alright with me. I'd wear a hat up in here. Because it would remind me. That I'm under somebody. Head pieces. I done mess around and got happy. When you wear these head pieces, that reminds that something above you. Yes, yes, yes. Am I doing all right? So y'all keep wearing them. Let them, let them call them. Dog, whatever they call them. Let them keep talking. But if you be reminded that when they get in trouble, they're going to run to the ones that are 